Hey guys, what's going on? Town back here for another video. Uh, it's been a while, it's my last one. I think uh, about a month, it's my last update. So I figured I would jump on here and uh, share what I've been listening to and uh, what I picked up. You know, I hope everyone is doing pretty good, doing well. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to come on here and make a video, but it gets so dark so, uh, so quickly now that I just didn't have time and then when I did have time the lighting in here sucks where I have my records are in my room so uh, it didn't work out so without further ado if you can hear it this is what we're listening to in the background this is Russ Fines and the Contemporary Music Ensemble uh, yep with Gemini from 1983 I believe 82 or 83 uh, CMS of private press so this is like if you can hear it, electronic it's weird, it's kind of varied. It's like synthy electronic stuff and then goes into funky jazz, back to electronic, back into uh, jazz stuff. Pretty good though. Probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoy it. Um, pretty cheap too. You can usually find that pretty easily, so. Cheers. Got my coffee as always. So let's just get into this here. First up, knocked off a long time one off my list. Um, I think I shared this on the uh, Facebook page. Malik's Emerging Four Arts Fort Force Art Trio. Well, excuse me. Malik's Emerging Force Art Trio. Sorry, I don't know why that was so hard to say. Uh, time and Condition. Excellent, excellent private press. St. Louis jazz. Um, free Afro jazz stuff. Uh, this guy, Malik, who's actually full name is Maurice Malik King, studied under um, Albert Ayler. So definitely some of that, but um, he's definitely early, also influenced when the AACM scene, I believe, in Chicago, and then um, the Black Artist Group bag scene in uh, St. Louis. Probably more so with St. Louis because he was from there, but I believe he was uh, had something to do with the Chicago scene as well. Anyway, really happy to have this one. Great stuff. Um, not too easy to find, as you can imagine. This is from the '80s. This is from '82. So it's a little bit later in his uh, musical journey, his discography, but he did some stuff before this too. Like I said, he was pretty influential in, new, uh, in the St. Louis arts and uh, black jazz scene, so I was happy to have this one. I did have to cut that corner myself because it was their corner was a bit lit chewed there. I don't know what happened, but it was just messed up, so I figured I would just cut it, make it look better. Uh, I've been selling some of my Sun Ra reissues and picking up some earlier pressings, last originals. This one just happens to be an earlier pressing. There's a uh, actual Sun Ra Saturn uh, release of this one as well from 69, but this is a 73 Impulse pressing of Atlantis. Pretty well known uh, Sun Ra album. I don't think I have to talk too much about this one. I think it's the uh, first use of the clavinet or Sun Ra called it the solar solar wind instrument the solar sound instrument but nice uh, kind of um, you know space jazz soundscapes from Sun Ra and crew John Gilmore is on here has a pretty nice uh, solo kind of Raga inspired solo on one of the tracks um, yeah great stuff nice 21 minute or 20 minute free jazz um, jam session on here as well so pretty cool got the usual suspects like I said uh, John Gilmore Pat Patrick Marshall Allen Danny Thompson Danny Davis etc but yeah like I said starting to sell some of my reach was picking up some more uh, earlier pressings of Sun Ra just selling off the ones I remember listening to as much and picking up the ones that I really do enjoy the key pressings which I want so or the key albums I should say uh, a Pharaoh I was missing for my collection love in us all this is from 74 on Impulse. Kind of an interesting cover there. This is uh, one of his last, if not his last, recording on Impulse. Nice uh, meditative, peaceful, um, really nice bass line on here. On, um, I think it was on the first track. Ah, it doesn't have a track list, which is <laughs> kind of weird. Oh, there we go. I thought, I don't know why I assumed it would just be on the. Uh, on the inside, yeah, Love is Everywhere, the first track. Excellent, excellent bass line, like I said, really nice, peaceful, meditative, um, 
playing. Really awesome. Starts out kind of uh, low key with just the bass line. Other players come in. Um, yeah, start getting down. Really, really great stuff. There's only two tracks on here. Love is everywhere on side A, which like I said is like the more low key, peaceful one. And then Two John on side B, which obviously to John Coltrane. Um, a lot more kind of uh, free, darker, aggressive, more powerful in some ways, but still both filled with a lot of uh, feeling and emotion. As you can imagine, Pharaoh usually plays that way, but first track kind of more being uh, maybe more vibrant, beautiful, spiritual, stuff like that, but it's on this uh, impulse label, I think that was the first pressing, so. Yeah, just missing uh, that Pharaoh on uh, Indian Navigation now, so still after that one, I said, big one for me. But anyway, that was that. Uh, picked up this Embryo record, which I've been after for a while. This is We Keep On, featuring Charlie Mariano. This is the 74 US pressing. Really nice. Kraut Rock, I thought it was a gatefold for some reason, not a gatefold, sorry. Kraut Rock. Um, Jazz Rock, also a nice MPS label, also some nice psych space rock, um, African rhythm music all mixed into here, so really great stuff, highly recommend checking this out. And right after that, a Kraut Rock monster, um, in my opinion, definitely one of the best I'm on Duel 2. Phallus Day, or Phallus Day, from 69 on the Liberty label. This is um, not an original, unfortunately, I wish it was, but hopefully one day. Either way, happy to have it. Kind of strange, experimental at times, but still amazing. Um, it had fantastic crowd rock, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Go listen to it. It's a must listen, in my opinion, so go check it out. I believe your sample's on YouTube, Ella. Leave a link as I usually do. Next up here, another big one crossed off the list. This is um, a trio Johnny Diani, OK Temmies, and uh, last guy's name, Mon Mongezi Feza. So Diani, Temmies, Feza. Music for Zaba. Um, fantastic jazz stuff. From 1973 on Sonet, I believe it was UK pressing originally. Uh, UK or Swedish, I don't remember. This is the US pressing though on Antilles. Maybe like a year or two years later. Uh, maybe three years later, I don't know, something like that. But original US pressing, so good enough for me. Great. Um, you know, free jazz, tribal jazz, world music. Um, all kind of really reminiscent of um, Don Terry, which actually I think all these guys played with him or were just either really inspired by him. I know they all had kind of some connections with Don Terry, so. There's a volume two to this as well, which, um, same name, Music for Zob, but it's volume two. Looking for that one as well. But great kind of Don Cherry influence inspired uh, world music, world jazz. So. Um, these next few pieces here was a very nice gift from Mr. Ben Costello over at Costello Tower. So thank you, Benny. Really appreciate you hooking me up. I will get you back to at some point, you know, but for now, let me show off what Ben was uh, kind of kind enough to send me. First up here, this is the one that I knew was coming that um, I've been after this, album, after this album for a while, excuse me, so I'm really happy that um, Ben sent it over. This is Extra Ball with Mosquito, nice Polish sort of uh, jazz rock, funky jazz rock stuff from 1981 on the Pole Jazz label. And a nice note there in uh, Polish from Benny. Some uh, really excellent writing there, man. I don't know uh, if you wrote that yourself, but if you did, congrats. Because <laughs> better than I like what I could do. Um, he also sent over Chick Corea, the so song of singing. Excuse me, this is on Blue Note. I think this is a Blue Note Liberty pressing, if I remember correctly. Yep, Blue Note Liberty pressing. Hopefully you guys can see that. Really nice trio, obviously, with uh, Barry Alchel and Dave Holland. Um, I think there's actually three-fourths 
These guys are three-fourths of the group circle, which is kind of interesting. I know they all tend to play together a lot, so. But yeah, really nice kind of uh, free, improvised, avant-garde jazz stuff. A really nice version of uh, Wayne Shorter's Nefertiti on here as well, so. That's cool. Really cool. Thank you, buddy. And then the last piece of whack you sent me was Bernard Purdy. Um, pretty Purdy. Soul is Pretty Purdy. I think the album. Um, I think the middle of his career right here, but great, fantastic, fantastic funk from uh, Bernard Purdy. A few covers on this, but he does um, uh, so much justice, so good. Jazzy soul, funky drum breaks, just um, amazing drumming as you can imagine on the Flying Dutchman label. This one was actually a gatefold and I, you know what, I didn't even take off the shrink yet, so let me do that right now. Check out what the gatefold looks like together. This was actually sealed when I got it, so that's why. You know, that's what it looks like. I don't want to not too much, but pretty cool. Thank you, Benny. This was awesome. Very nice gift. And um, he actually did send me one CD as well, which is this one, which I wasn't familiar with, Blue Buddha, which is, I guess, a project of Louis Belogenis. Hello, Janice. Um, yeah, not familiar with him, but a little description here says uh, tone reminiscent of Albert Ayler cutting his teeth with masters such as Rashid Ali, Sonny Murray, Bora Bergman. So, really cool. Nice jazz stuff. Um, the lineup on here is Louis Belagonis, Belagonis on tenor sax, Dave Douglas on trumpet, Bill Laswell on bass, so pretty cool. And Tyson Sori on drums on the Tzadzik, Tzadzik label, T-Z-A-D-K. Um, yeah, great stuff though. Nice kind of spiritual-ish improvisation, improvisational jazz music. Um, I enjoyed it, really great stuff, really cool cover art too. So, big thanks to Mr. Ben Costello at Costello Towers. Always holding me down, so thanks sir. Um, once again, Moving on. So once again, um, knocking out a big want on my want list. A lot of these are actually uh, big wants. It's worked out that way, finding a lot of stuff I've been after. This is a, another Private Press um, Connecticut record, actually, from my home state of Connecticut. Quintessence. Um, yeah, I think it's a quintet. You can probably tell from the name. Um, funky, soulful, spiritual jazz stuff. That's really all I have to say about this from... Uh, the early 80s, I believe. I think it's from like 80, or maybe, yeah, from 1980. The cover has a bit of a warp on it, you can see, but the record has a few scratches, but still, I got it for 15 bucks, so no way I was gonna pass on it. Shout out to uh, Records The Good Kind. Ian over there hooked me up big on this, so thank you, Ian. If you're in Connecticut, definitely go check out that shop. Great stuff. Quintessence, definitely check it out if you can find it. Not the easiest thing to find. One that is a little bit easier to find, which I actually grabbed from um, Progzar, Cesar, the Bronx, thank you Cesar. Oliver Lake, Heavy Spirits, one I did not have from Oliver Lake. I think this actually might be, uh, actually I don't know if it's, I don't think, this first one, anyway, from 74 on, a, or 75, Arista Freedom. Intense, but really great. I would say kind of intense, but rewarding. If you listen to it enough, you have to get something out of it. Free Jazz, obviously. Oliver Lake. Um, you have Oliver Lake on alto sax. Aludera, which is Nas's father, if you don't know, on trumpet. Donald Smith on piano. Stafford James on bass. Victor Lewis on drums. Charles Bobo Shaw plays on here as well, as well as Joseph Bowie. Uh, I believe that's it. Yeah, great stuff though. Heavy Spirits, Oliver Lake. Classic free jazz stuff. Another one I got from uh, Cesar as well, which was this Dorothy Ashby. One that I see around a few times, but never actually picked it up. Um, this is Soft Winds, The Swinging Heart of Dorothy Ashby. 
basically a covers a bit you don't you can tell some tape there no actual really splits on the seams just uh, a lot of wear but still got this for a really good deal so this is an original white label promo on Jazzland Yep, there as well, promotional copy. But more kind of straight ahead hard bop stuff. Straight ahead jazz, jazz, excuse me, but really beautiful. It's beautiful hard playing, as you can imagine, from Dorothy Ashby with Terry Pollard and Vibes, Herman Wright on bass, Jimmy Cobb on drums, and Dorothy herself on harp, recorded in 1961 in New York City. Really cool. Always pick up Dorothy Ashby stuff if I see it, which is really rare. Never see her stuff, but when I can. Uh, another huge one, which I've been after for years, like I said, a lot of big uh, big wants knocked off in this video, so I've been after this one for years. So happy to find this for a good price. This is Omar Korshid and his guitar with Rhythms from the Orient. I believe this is his debut album. So Omar Korshid was a, um, he was born in Egypt, um, but moved to Lebanon years later so I guess he's Egyptian really but Egyptian guitarist um, probably one of the best guitarists in, uh, in the Arab world in my opinion maybe at least at that time I don't know about now but in the 70s so this is from 1974 on Voice of Lebanon pretty well-known label over there um, Middle Eastern music you can imagine guitar music but it's so much more it's Middle Eastern organ uh, Moog on here Eastern percussion um, guitar electric guitar Really, really interesting album. Um, like I said, just an amazing guitarist. Definitely worth checking out. I believe there's uh, samples of this on YouTube, which I'll link. But part psych, part folk, um, part traditional um, music, Arabian music. Um, maybe some belly dancing music in here too. I know it's been described as that, but just uh, fantastic stuff. And I think it's actually been imported by Rashid Sales Company, if you guys know anything about the um, releases from over there, Lebanon, Egypt, they used to do a lot of importing, stuff like that, so, but yeah, really happy to have this, really clean copy too, can't believe I got this for, uh, the shape I got it for, the person I got it for, so, one of those uh, times that just someone really just didn't know what they had or just didn't care and just let it go for a low price, so, really happy to have that, knocked off the list. Um, been after this one for a while too. This is a reissue. Probably won't be finding the original <clears throat> anytime soon unless I come across a good deal like the previous one. This is uh, Malatu Estaki and his Ethiopian quintet with Afro Latin soul. A lot of you guys probably uh, seen this around or heard of Malatu Estaki, his name. Pretty well known. Hold on a second, guys. Give me a minute. Let me move this because the sun is right. About to come out and hit my eyes. All right. Um, yeah, great stuff. Uh, nice Afro-Cuban kind of stuff on here. Maybe more straight ahead than his um, later release, his later stuff. It's more Latin. Um, I'm sorry, more um, African, Ethiopian, funky stuff. This is more Latin soul jazz uh, kind of vein. Like I said, Afro-Cuban, Latin soul jazz. Um, yeah, a bit more straight ahead, but still fantastic. Very, very good. Um, originally from 66. This is a uh, reissue, 180 gram reissue, on the same label actually, Worthy Records, so um, hopefully he put it out himself. Great stuff though, definitely gotta pick up his uh, other stuff too. I think that was the end of side one for that record, so he's got a few things left to show here, so let me just flip it. I think my camera's about to run out of time, and I'm just at 20 minutes, so... I don't take up any more of your guys' time. Let me fly through the rest of these. Only a few left here. Bill Evans. Or Bill Evans. Sorry. Uh, Larry Young. Unity. Sorry. Next up for Bill Evans. Larry Young. Unity. An original mono on Blue Note from 1965. It's the New York USA label. Hopefully you guys can see that. Excellent uh, modal post bop bop on guard stuff. Um, yeah. Fantastic organ player. You guys probably know who uh, Larry Young is. If you don't, definitely go check it out. But along with Woody Shaw, Joe Henderson, and Elvin Jones, fantastic, fantastic quartet. Highly recommend this one. If you're listening to any 
Larry Young. I recommend starting with this one if you don't know who he is. Really happy to have this. Thank you to Andy for uh, hooking that one up. And Bill Evans. I said Bill Evans because of the record I was looking at. Bill Evans Explorations, the Bill Evans Trio. Um, great, great stuff. More modal, post pop kind of stuff. This is with Scott LaFaro on bass and Paul Motion on drums. Um, really interesting record. Be kind of a, this is on Riverside actually. They basically breathe new life into uh, old jazz tracks. I really enjoyed this quite a bit. So, great stuff. Um, I think I'm probably going to end it off there. It's 20 minutes, so I'm sure you guys don't want to sit through any more of my rambling. So I do have more stuff to show, but save that for next time. Um, that's it. Hope you guys have a good week, good weekend. Leave me comments if you want, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, have a good Thanksgiving if you celebrate. Peace.